Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. Uh, welcome back to part two of my three part um, January pickups um, series. Um, we're looking at another pile today. The, the pile isn't so quite so big as last time. Um, so this might be a bit quicker, but um, we'll see. So um, let's just get started on looking at the first thing straight away. Um, I begin with my one and only Wii game this time, and this is Pac-Man Party. Now, I quite enjoy this sort of party game, like um, Mario Party, of course, or Wii Party, Wii Party U. Um, there's a few others. Bishy Bashy is a little bit like that, but it hasn't got the board game stuff. I'm not really sure if this one has got a board game type mode in it. It looks like it does, actually, from the back. But anyway, yeah, it's the same sort of mini game collection as the others but Pac-Man themed of course and it looked pretty good from what I'd seen I forget who mentioned this one I, I watched so many different channels and um, buy things sometimes when people recommend things and, and this was on one of them but I, I forget who um, let's do the trailer I for, I've forgotten to do that haven't I um, okay yeah so let's just have a little look at the trailer. Um, when I, ha I haven't done one of these videos for a week or more I forget um, my own um, format and uh, start talking on about the game without even starting the tra that trailer going so yeah as you can see uh, I don't know if this came al exactly when this came out if it's the around the same time as the ghostly adventures which we'll get to in a second says Pac-Man 30th anniversary but yeah the mini games look pretty um, fun don't they there um, of course I really need someone to play this with to get the most out of it so it'll have to wait until I can get over to my brother's house or perhaps we play a little bit of it when he comes but it'd be more, more fun to play with my niece who's um, still quite young but getting good at this sort of game now so um yeah, this could be one that she would like to play with me. So, I think the graphics look decent. Um, of course, being a Wii, it's it's not going to blow anyone away, really. But um, it's colourful uh, and um, doesn't look like it's um, going to be too hard to control or anything. Um, let's have a look at the controllers. You can use classic controllers, which is nice. Um, but anyway, that's really enough of that one so it's, let's switch um, continuing the Pac-Man theme for the next couple of games actually I, I have Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures on the Xbox 360 but somehow I failed to notice when I was buying it that I was buying I think it's Spanish Pac-Man Pac or is it French French Pac-Man et la Aventure Montreuse so yeah, it's Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, which was also a cartoon series. Let's start the trailer before I forget again. Yeah, they did a cartoon series to tie in with this, um, um, which um, I never saw anything about really. But um, yeah, this game looks like a lot of fun. It's a it's a fairly sort of generic um, 3D platformer. It's not gonna trouble the likes of um, Mario Galaxy or Odyssey obviously but it looks um, fairly competently made um, I know classic game room um, undertow Derek didn't have very kind things to do because kind things to say about it because I did look up um, a review of his and yeah and he said it was just terribly generic and boring but um, um, it wasn't expensive, only a couple of quid, so as long as I get a little bit of enjoyment out of it, then um, I'm satisfied, to be honest. Here comes a kitty right in the way. Um, and the next game is the sequel. So I'm not sure if I'm going to watch all of this. Let, let's just um, switch back to Big Me. Yeah, so here's Teddy. He's just going to say hello. There we go. Um... And I'll just briefly show you the cover for the second game, which is in English, thankfully. Is it complete? Yes, it's complete. I've got the manual in the, and the, everything in there. So let's start the trailer for... Here we go, Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures 2. 
I'll just pick the kitty up so he's not in the way. It looks much the same, but um, improved. Um, I think this is one of the last Xbox 360 games to come out. Obviously, there's stuff like Dance Central. Um, was it no, no, just Dance, I think it is. The Ubisoft one that comes out for years after a console has died. But this was one of the last... Last um, games, so I'm surprised it hasn't um, dramatically risen in value. Um, I think um, this was on a media glitch episode that Reggie was on. I don't think Reggie recommended it, but oh no, it was Gabo actually on um, Gaming Off the Grid. Gabo um, was a guest on there, and he recommended um, this game in particular. He said it, he in, he enjoyed it, so um, yeah, I think I, I do enjoy a, a a fun platformer. So I'm I'm willing to ch check these out for a few hours at least and um, see what I think of them. Lots of mini games again, and um, oh, that's that um, scary looking thing. I was sent a, a toy of that thing in um, a mystery box that I got once. Let's flip back. So now, let's move on to the next game. This is Naruto Rise of a Ninja. Naruto Rise of a Ninja was recommended on a pretty old episode of Consolvania. In fact, I think it was the Consolvania Top 100. And Ryan mentioned it, and he said it was... Um, of all the Naruto games that have come out, this was his favourite, and nothing's come close to it since. The, um, I really don't know much about Naruto. I've never watched it. I've never played a game. I don't really know the plot, other than, obviously, he's a ninja in, a, in training. Uh, and I know that he's now got a son called Boruto who's basically sort of taken over and Naruto's more or less retired but that's about the limit of my knowledge I, I think it's quite well received and this is the same sort of graphics engine as um, the um, Tales series from Namco and um, Dragon Ball games because they're all published by Bandai Namco and I'd imagine they use the same engine it's, it still looks good to this day, this um, sort of cartoony an anime engine that they've come up with. Um, yes, yeah, so lots of um, action-based combat. Um, and I think there's a, it's, I don't know if it's quite an RPG, it's, um, it's probably a, an adventure, an action-adventure game. But um, I need to stick some of these um, 360 games in, um, I'm thinking maybe this week taking a break from Shenmue 3, which I'm playing at the moment, and checking out a few of these. But yeah, that's that one. Um, next up, we have a game that's still in its cellophane, um, and that's um, DMC Devil May Cry. This particular DMC game was the one that was developed by um, Ninja Theory. Um, there was a bit of outcry, actually, that um, a Western developer took supposedly took over the series and completely changed it, rebooted it and changed the style and everything but it turns out it was only just a, a one game thing really and they, they've they gone back to um, Devil May Cry 5 is the latest one isn't it and and that's using, using the usual version of Dante so they just let Ninja Theory have a go at doing their version of Devil May Cry um, it, it is a really good game. It's um, underrated. Um, as I said, fans of the series gave it a bit of hate just because it was so different. But um, if you like other Ninja Theory games, like um, Shadows of the Damned or... Um, what's it? Um, Journey to the West. Uh, Enslaved Journey to the West. Then you should consider checking this one out. Um, I have played... A few hours of it before on the PS3 because I think it was a PS Plus game, but now I have a physical copy on the Xbox as well. So, oh, the cat is trying to demolish the f shelves behind me. So, yeah, 
Um, I usually struggle with um, the difficulty of these Devil May Cry games. Um, even on the lower settings, they're still pretty brutal. But um, from what I remember, this one was a bit more gentle. Um, maybe that's why I, I quite liked it, because I could actually make progress in it. But um, yeah, um, there's some really cool levels. Um, you can see little bits of some of them here. Uh, Dante's a bit of a douche in, in this one, but other than that, um, there's a lot to like here. It's gone all devilly. Anyway, yeah, there we go. So, just two more games left now, and we've switched over to the original Xbox. First up, we have Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. So yeah, this is going to be an older 4x3 trailer, slightly fuzzy, because um, HD wasn't really a thing back then on the internet either. So um, I've always wanted to play this one. Um, there's a few sort of um, side games that seemed quite interesting. There was um, the Special Forces game and there's um, Mythologies Sub-Zero. I don't know if they did another one. I think they were planning to do more Mythologies games and... It didn't really, one of them didn't perform very well, so they didn't carry it on. But this one focuses on um, Liu Kang and, what's his name? I can't remember. The guy with the hat. I can't remember his name. He's, they've probably mentioned his name in this trailer, but I haven't got the sound up so that I can hear it. So anyway, yeah, that guy with the hat who's who can cut people in half with it. Those are the two main characters. And yeah, it just it's just a sort of fun single player um action platform game with um fighty bits and Johnny Cage. Yeah, load loads of the old characters appear. Lots of barackers whatever their race is called, I can't remember. But um yeah. I shall um fire up the original Xbox as well at some point um, I really must sort of put a pause on picking up so many older games and, and spend some time playing them um, I know definitely so far in February I've, I have bought a lot less although we're only about a week in but um, yeah I think February will be a lighter month Let's see. and that just leaves our final Xbox game which is Wings of War So this one, um, classic gaming Pete, or open every box Pete, or whatever he's calling himself now, um, is collect trying to collect every Xbox game, and he picked this one up recently. Um, and I had never really heard of it, but I like um, sort of arcadey um, dogfighting combat games. Um, I'm more of a fan of sci-fi ones, to be honest, like um, TIE Fighter, or Star Wars Squadrons was a more recent one, or Chorus. But um, this one is a World War II, um, or is it World War One? It might be World War One even. Um, yes, it's World War One, of course, because it's older planes. I should have should have realised that straight away, but never mind. I think the graphics look pretty good for um, an, uh, an older Xbox title, so. Um, yeah, I am looking forward to giving it a try. As long as there's no really annoying escort missions, which is um, sometimes the sticking point on games like this, we should be all right. Um, if you want, the, if you want to play one that's surprisingly good fun, try um, Snoopy versus the Red Baron on the PlayStation Two. That's this sort of game, but um, obviously cartoony and with um with Snoopy and and yeah that's worth a look um so i think that brings us to the end okay i'll just switch back switch back to big dave for a, a second um yeah so that brings us to the end of part 2 there's one more to come uh, a week from now and the focus for that one is mainly ps3 games um i think there's a few other things i forget now but um yeah so i'll um bring that one out at the same time 
um, a Sunday a week after this one goes up. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching all the way through again if you did. Um, let me know if you've played any of these games or if you um, are interested in picking any of these up now that I've done this video. Um, and yeah, hope to hope you watch the next one. Um, uh, yeah, so see you then. And, and in the meantime, take care.